Hey there, welcome back. So in part one of this tutorial, we touch on a few points about the IDMT relay functionality. And we also started off by calculating uh, the plug settings, which is question A on this particular tutorial. So if you want to catch up, please ensure that you watch part one of this tutorial. And also if you are not too familiar about the IDMT uh, relay characteristics calculation, please watch my playlist on IDMT relay in this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off after we started calculating the suitable plug settings for our relay now the question arises: why do we need to calculate the plug setting now as you can see on this network here we got the two relays here a b and c now the three main point where we need to calculate the plug settings is for coordinations setting the pickup current and also ensure selective tripping of the IDMT relay as they are all on the same network. Now we know that the plug settings set the minimum current in which the IDMT relay can start operating. Now this is to ensure coordination between these three IDMT relay, the upstream and the downstream relay. That is why while calculating the plug setting, we needed to find the overload current and the normal load current so that we can distinguish between these two current as to when is the right time for each one of the IDMT relay to operate. So for the relay A plug setting, because this relay does not have any uh, bus bar on the upstream side that it is protecting, so we don't have to calculate the plug setting for this relay. Now for relay B, because it is protecting the bus, the stuff on, on bus bar A, then we have to do the calculation for that relay and we're going to move all the way to relay C. Great. Now, moving forward, as we've already calculated the plug setting for relay B, and we've determined that uh, the plug setting should be set at 125% plug setting. So now let's go ahead and move on to find the plug setting for this particular relay, which is relay C. Now we know that based on our understanding, relay C must protect bus bar A and bus bar B, right? So how are we going to ensure that this relay here? C does not trip when there is a normal or an overload occurring on the system. Okay, so that basically means we need to check the overload on bus bar B and we must add that value to the normal load running on bus bar A. Now, based on our understanding, we know that the two motors attached on bus bar B are running at a full load current of 25 amps each based on the fact that each motor is being started one at a time so at time the worst case scenario here will be the one motor running and the other one starting so the one motor running will be the 25 amps now the one starting will be the 25 amps full load current times the six uh, amp per unit and adding this will give us a current of 175 amps as you can see there okay so now this current is the overload current uh for bus bar b but we need to take account of the situation on bus bar a where the three motors are already running okay so in that case we need to add the normal load of bus bar a which is three motors times three that's 75 amps okay so that will give us a total overload of 250 amps that the particular relay C here should be able to allow to flow without tripping. Okay, so based on that, we can then calculate the plug setting for this relay using the 90% pickup setting for the current. Okay, and also note that the normal load that a relay C here is going to see that is combined load on A and B that is equal to 125 amps but now you can see the 125 amps is much less than 250 so we need to calculate our plug setting based on the overload conditions okay so based on this we can move them forward and calculate our plug setting based on the overload and the normal current great now let's go ahead and calculate the plug setting with a normal condition based on the 90 percent pickup current so the resulting plug setting will then be 0 0.926 and that is basically 92.6 percent on our scale here but because we do not have a 92.6 percent plug setting we then choose a hundred percent plug setting but our main target here is to get the plug setting for relay c on the overload 
condition that is what matter to us because we do not want these relay here to trap when there is an overload condition so the overload condition with the pickup current of 1.1 okay that will result in a value of 1.51 which is 151 percent okay as always there is no selection for 151 percent we cannot move backward you have to take the next high value on a 25 percent steps and that will give us a plug setting selection of 175 percent that we can then pull this plug and put it on 175 percent great now we can move ahead okay on the next question which is to calculate the suitable time multiplier settings for the relay at c and b right because we are basically ignoring the relay at a because there is nothing for us to calculate on the side of the circuit going upward so we need to calculate only on for relay c and b because they are the only relays that have bus bars that they need to protect on our current network great so what is the time multiplier settings of an idmt relay now this is a crucial uh, basically parameter that actually regulate or set up the time in which the idmt relay has to operate now based on the problem statement that we've got at hand here it says that this relay at b got a minimum time of 0.5 right that it's need before it can start operating so this is the actual time that it will take for the relay here once energized once the disk start turning and everything is running it will take at least half a second before it's operate okay but then that is ta now tms is given by the following formula tms is equal to ta divided by tc now ta is the actual time that is given to us tc is the operating time that we need to calculate based on the characteristics curve of the idmt relay now before we can calculate tc here we first need to find m the multiple of setting current that is then calculated by the fault current divided by the ct ratio times the nominal current times uh, the plug settings that we already calculated here so for relay b we got a plug setting of 125 which is 1.25 and the current right uh, because relay b is protecting uh, bus bar a here so the fault current is 900 amp so that give us a multiple of setting of 4.8 okay then we're going to take a 4.8 and use it in the very inverse uh, characteristics curve of our idmt relay noting that our actual time the operating time is 0 0.5 second okay so tc is equal to 1.6 over log m square this is a formula that was given to us in the problem statement and this then yield a value of tc equal to 3.45 seconds great now we can take that tc and then replace it in the tms formula then we're going to find a time multiplier settings of 0 0.145 second now this tms value that we just calculated now is based on the actual time the operating time of 0 0.5 second that the relay b has to operate for a fault on bus bar a now we need to find the actual time of this same relay b for a fault on its own bus bar remember on its own bus bar here the fault is much larger okay so which means we need to expect uh, an actual time an operating time that is much shorter right okay so to do that we're going to repeat the calculation here okay so relay b for a fault at b right and this will give us a value of m that is equal to 8 now notice we are using the very same plug setting because we're still calculating for the same relay b and from here we can then deduce the new value of tc that would be 1.6 divided by log 8 square 
that give us 1.96 seconds basically almost two seconds but remember to never round these values you have to leave these values as is because it is very important we are dealing very very short time period here so if you round it all your calculations are going to be out and your idmt relay will actually have wrong settings on it so it's important to not round the values great so you can round them to two decimal three decimal but never round them to a wall number great now we can then go ahead and find the value of ta right for relay b for a fault uh on its own bus bar and that would then be given by using the tms formula here and we can then make ta the subject of the formula and that would be ta is equal to tms times tc now remember tms we calculated already tms here okay and now we've got a new tc now this is all important to ensure that the relay is trapped only for a fault related to the settings okay so it cannot trap for a fault that is not related to its setting great so this gives us the ta value of 0, 284 seconds okay so where do we go from here now we basically done the calculation for relay b so that you can deal with the fault on bus bar a and on bus bar b now we need to repeat the same calculation for the relay at c okay to basically deal with the fault on bus bar b and the fault on its own bus bar which we are not going to do anything here because there is no fault current provided on bus bar c so we basically only going to calculate uh the time multiplier setting for this relay for the fault on bus bar b now before we calculate the time multiplier settings for relay c for the fault at b we need to first understand what's going on here now the ta that we just calculated now those value here this value is based on the fault on bus bar b for the relay at b as well now if relay c must also trap for the same fault current now you understand there is a situation going on there this is why these two relay they've got different plug setting this one got plug setting of 125 percent and this one got plug setting of 75 percent now this is to ensure that they do not trip at the same time for the same fault but now there is also an issue of the grading margin that was given to us that also has to play a role because remember the plug setting value is only a settings that will tell you how fast this dust gear is going to turn okay so which means even though you've got different plug settings but if you do not have the correct uh, coordination in terms of the actual time of trapping they might still trap at the same time now according to the problem statement they say before this relay c can come to play we have to allow a grading margin of 0, 0,4 second and this is in relation to relay b that was given a grading margin or an actual operating time here of 0 0.5 second when we were calculating relay b for a fault on bus bar a so what does all of this mean this just means that before you can calculate the tms right for relay c for a fault at b you have to take this 0 0.4 second here you must take it into account and you must add it to this value before you can calculate tms like we've done here that basically what it means okay that's simple so let's go ahead and calculate the time multiplier setting for relay c for a fault on b now we know that this relay the plug setting is 0, uh, 0,5 here or 175 percent so that basically calculating the multiple settings is going to be very easy for us okay so it's 1500 150 divided by 5 times 5 times 1.75 and we've got a multiple of settings of 5.71 now we can take this multiple of setting and then calculate tc with the very inverse characteristics formula they gave us and we're gonna find a tc of 2.79 please confirm that with your calculator 
and from here this is where the grading margin come to place as i've already explained that we've got a grading margin of 0.4 second okay and that need to be added with the previous actual time for this relay for a fault on bus bar b as well at the same fault right so this will then give us does require actual operating time that will be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.284 and that give us this value and we're now going to use this value to basically calculate the term multiplier settings and that give us 0 0.684 divided by 2.79 and we have a value of 0 0.2 for five seconds please confirm with your calculator and that will basically give us the correct settings for this relay so based on our network here we've confirmed that we got two different plug settings the relay b we're gonna move the plug setting from here to here one two five okay to somewhere here okay and for relay c we're moving the plug setting somewhere here that is one seven Five. and also we setting them with a different time multiplier setting based on the actual operating time and the tripping time that we have calculated that will allow this disk to turn based on the plug setting and also reaches uh, the, the specified time setting that we set for the relay to operate when the fault occur and this is in accordance to allow the overload and the normal load current to flow without tripping so that is it guys for idmt relays if you find this tutorial useful and you find it very informative please ensure that you give this tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel so you can get more tutorial on these kind of topics until next time cheers